What is the difference between a buyer's market and a seller's market? Hey, thanks for joining. Today we're talking about the difference between a buyer's market and a seller's market. I'm Becca Summers with Seasons Real Estate, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can learn everything about Utah and real estate. In today's video, we're talking about what is a buyer's market, what is a seller's market, and what's the difference. So we'll start with the fundamentals. What is a seller's market? A seller's market means that the seller has more control over the process. Now, why would a seller have more control over the process? It's because there's not a lot of inventory. So this is all based around inventory. So if inventory is under six months, it's considered a seller's market. Meaning if for some reason nothing else was listed, it would take six months to sell everything on the market. So a white hot seller's market is a 1.5 month inventory, meaning everything would sell in a month and a half, which is super quick, which makes it super competitive. Now, does everything sell in a seller's market? No, absolutely not. On average, 30% of homes still don't sell in a seller's market. So why would 30% of homes still not sell in a seller's market? The main reason is pricing, condition, and location because real estate, as everyone says, is a local business. And if you are pricing your house outside of what the neighborhood's willing to pay, you're not gonna sell your house no matter how hot the market is because people looking at your house are gonna be comparing it to houses that are nicer than yours. So pricing still matters when it comes to selling in a seller's market. So how do you know your neighborhood is in a seller's market without even asking a realtor? Probably the easiest one is how quick houses in your neighborhood are going under contract. So houses are put on the market and if they go under contract in less than 30 days, it's probably a seller's market. Now that's not always true because depending on your price point, your neighborhood might be in a buyer's market while the rest of the city is in a, in a seller's market because it's very determined on the price point as well. So if your neighbor just listed their house and they went under contract in five days, either they underpriced it or you're in a seller's market. So looking at the numbers and knowing the values of your neighborhood make a big difference. Now, if five of your neighbors went under contract in five days, you're definitely in a seller's market. So what's the benefit to selling in a seller's market? Probably the most obvious one is you have more control as a seller and you get to price your house with comps or slightly above comps. So what are comps? Comps are homes that we compare your house to. So if your house were for sale and the house across the street were for sale and you have the same square footage, same bedroom, bathroom count, and same finishes, which one would sell for more or which one sold for more all depends on the marketing. That's where hiring a good professional makes a big difference. So not every house will sell for the exact same. Another way to know that you're in a seller's market is how many offers people are getting. So if you're talking to your neighbor and they got three offers, four offers, or even 10 offers, you're probably in a seller's market. Now, if they only got one offer and it was a lowball offer, that's probably a buyer's market. But also that depends on how long the house itself has been on the market. So what is a buyer's market? A buyer's market is the opposite. It means the buyer has more control. So why would a buyer's market even happen? The main reason buyer's market happens is because buyers aren't interested in buying houses. So typically this happens in an economic recession when buyers aren't interested because of other things going on in their lives. Um, if you think back to the Great Recession, a lot of people lost their jobs or a lot of people were underemployed. So buying a house was not on their radar as they were just trying to take care of their four walls around themselves, their food, their electricity, their housing. They weren't thinking about buying houses. So a lot of the buyers in a buyer's market are typically first time home buyers because they're not as impacted by a recession as those who already currently own homes. Another reason a buyer's market happens is there's a lot more inventory on the market. So again, if you think back to the last recession, there was a lot of inventory on the market because people owed way more than their houses were worth and needed to get out of them for personal reasons like death, divorce, or loss of job. So there were a lot of homes on the market for short sales. There were a lot of homes on the market for foreclosures. So buyers had a ton to pick through, but there weren't a ton of buyers out shopping in the market. So a buyer's market is historically inventory wise, at least six months plus in inventory. So if you have nine months of inventory, it's gonna take nine months to sell everything on the market. So in a buyer's market, the last recession, the worst buyer's market, only 30% of homes actually sold. So it really mattered who you hired to get your house sold because it took a lot of extra effort because there just weren't that many buyers on, in the market. 
So what happens in a buyer's market is a lot fewer homes actually sell percentage-wise. So the last couple years, we've been selling about 8,000 homes a quarter in Utah. And in a buyer's market, we were selling 4,000 homes a quarter. So that was about 50% drop in how many homes were actually selling, not being listed and sold, but actually selling because there just wasn't as much buyer demand. So why would a seller sell in a buyer's market? Typically, it's not for happy reasons. Yes, there are still some sellers who sell because they're growing and need a bigger space or they are selling because they're buying their dream home because it just came on the market because someone else lost it. But a lot of reasons, it's sad reasons like death and divorce, job loss, um, being over leveraged and just not being able to afford their house payment anymore. So what happens in that market is it's very important to sell your house and it's strategic, but the time on market's a lot longer. So how do you know you're in a buyer's market without actually talking to a realtor? Probably the easiest one is a lot of for sale signs without sold signs or coming down. So if there's a lot of homes for sale and none of them are selling, you're probably in a buyer's market. It's very common to be in a buyer's market in a higher price point because there's always fewer buyers in that higher price point. So for Utah, for example, anything over 600,000 in Salt Lake County is a luxury price point or a jumbo loan price point. Anything in Utah County over 510 is considered luxury or jumbo, meaning the buyer has to have a larger down payment to buy that home. So if you're selling a million plus home in either county, it's gonna take a whole lot longer to sell your house than if you're selling a $450,000 home. So price point makes a big difference in what type of market you're in and marketing to the right buyer is a big deal in either market. So what happens at six months? Because six months could be a seller or a buyer's market. What six months is, is actually a balanced market, meaning that neither buyer or seller have more control in the process. So why do we not see balanced markets very often? It's because inventory when it comes to real estate is kind of like a pendulum. It moves really, really quick one way and kind of seems to slow down when it's in one market or the other and then it switches back very quickly because people make decisions based off of what's going on around them and around the economy and those things happen and change quickly. So we don't see a balanced market very often but working in a balanced market is always tricky because we're trying to predict which way the pendulum swinging and which way to price your house. When it comes to getting your house sold in a balanced market, marketing your house is super important. Now you might have noticed in all three markets I've talked about marketing your home being very important because yes, in a white hot seller's market it might be easier to sell your house, but did you underprice your house because you priced it with comps when you could have been pricing it 5-10% to 10 above comps because there's not enough inventory? Now there's always issues that come with pricing your house above comps because you might be too high. There's a safe pricing bracket that you can price within to make sure that you're getting the most amount of money for your house but not leaving any money on the table. And there's it's a fairly complicated strategy to get your home sold for top dollar without leaving money on the table, without overpricing your home. And that's where a true professional comes in and makes a difference. But in a seller's market, if the values are going up, the next struggle you have is getting the appraiser to understand the value of your home. Because how value is determined is it's what a seller is willing to sell a home for, what a buyer is willing to pay, and what a bank is willing to lend. Because only about 13% of homes in Utah are cash transactions, so most of your buyers are gonna be paying with a loan, so we're gonna to have to have an appraisal done. Now there are things called appraisal waivers, which are great if you are a listing agent, but as a buyer, an appraisal waiver might cost you more in closing costs and funding fees because it's a bigger risk to the bank or your interest rate might be slightly higher. So as a buyer, getting an appraisal waiver might not be the best thing. But when it comes to pricing your house, if you price it aggressively, you get multiple offers that push it up and the house goes above the market value, getting the appraiser to see that the value is the next struggle. So how is inventory actually calculated? The simplest formula is you take what's currently active on the market and you divide it by what has sold in the last 30 days. Now, if you want a more an even more accurate number, you can divide it by what's gone under contract in the last 30 days. Because homes that have sold in the last 30 days probably went under contract at least 30 days, possibly 60 days before. So that gives you a little bit more of a lag time on that assessment. So if you go with what went under contract in the last 30 days, that'll get you a more accurate idea of what's going on in the market. Now, when it comes to actually calculating this number, there are some factors you wanna think about. Something locally in Utah that we have a problem with is we have a lot of new construction inventory that's considered to be built. 
So if you were trying to figure out the inventory levels with the to be built market, you'd have a lot more inventory, which would show that our market has more inventory than it really does. Right now we have counting new construction about two and a half months worth of inventory, but if you take the new construction out, we only have about 1.9 months of inventory, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're selling an existing house, that makes a big difference cutting off that half month because that's gonna get your house sold quicker. We'll do some rough numbers for you. So let's say there's 3,000 houses currently available on the market in the county that you're searching. And you don't wanna do more than a county, and sometimes I'd even do a city if I need to, but say in the county there's 3,000 houses. And in the last 30 days, only 500 have gone under contract. So you take 3,000, divide it by 500, and that gives you six, which means six months worth of inventory. So again, if nothing else were listed, it would take six months to sell everything because that's about what the buyer demand is. So when it comes to inventory, inventory is very hyper-local. So you can do the county, you can even do the city, and you can even potentially do your neighborhood. Now once you get to neighborhood numbers, it gets a little tricky because there's typically not as many homes selling in a neighborhood. So I typically stick with city to give me the biggest number but to tell you what's going on in that particular city. If you're thinking about selling in the great state of Utah and you're wondering what market we're in, feel free to reach out to me here and I'd love to go over the numbers if we're in a seller's market, buyer's market, and go over a strategy to get your home sold for top dollar.